Why does the author use extended metaphor to describe the train? In this lesson, you will learn how to interpret an extended metaphor by looking carefully at the word choices meant to paint a picture for the reader. The Railway Train is a poem by Emily Dickinson. Like many poets, Emily Dickinson uses figurative language in this poem to describe the subject. Poets use figurative language like similes and metaphors to help the reader imagine the subject of the poem in different ways. This particular poem uses extended metaphor. Metaphor is when two unlike things are compared. For example, her smile was the sun in a dark room. Extended metaphor is when the same comparison is used throughout the poem. The steps we will take to answer the question are the following. One, we will read through the entire poem, underlining words and phrases that indicate the author is comparing the subject of the poem to something else. Then we'll ask ourselves, what image is created in my mind through these comparisons? We'll jot down these adjectives or images that represent our visualization. Then we'll look over our description and ask ourselves, how does this comparison change the way I see the subject of the poem? As a reminder, we'll be following these steps in order to answer the question, why does the author use extended metaphor to describe the train? In the first step, I'm going to read through the poem and underline the words or phrases that indicate the author is comparing the subject of the poem to something else. I know that the subject of the poem is a train, so I'm going to try to underline the words that seem like they're describing something other than a train. Let's see, in the first stanza, the words lick and lap are not actions that a train would normally do, so I'm going to underline those. A train would not really be able to step around a pile of mountains, so I'm going to underline that. I know that peer means to look at something, which is not an action that normally describes a train, so I'll underline that. In the third stanza, the line, then chase itself downhill, makes me think about the different cars in a train, but a train can't chase itself, so I'll underline that too. Finally, in the last stanza, the words that stand out as describing something other than a train are the words nay and stable door, which make me think of a horse, not a train. I'm going to write these phrases and words down on a post-it so that I can look at them more carefully in the next step. Now I'm going to look carefully at the, these underlined sections on my post-it and ask myself, what images are created in my mind through these comparisons? The words lick and lap remind me of a hungry animal. So I'm gonna put that down on my post-it. The phrase step around a pile of mountains makes me visualize a tall animal with long legs. The word peer makes me think about something or someone that is curious because only someone that is curious would peer into someone else's home. And when I visualize something chasing itself down a hill, it makes me think of something that is playful and energetic. Although these other phrases make me think of any animal in general, these last words, nay and stable door, really make me think about a horse. So I'm gonna include that image to remind myself. Now I'm going to take a look at these descriptions I wrote and ask myself, how does this change the way I see the train in Dickinson's poem? What is Dickinson really trying to say about the train when she compares it to a horse? As I answer this question, I'm going to write my thoughts down on a post-it so I can use them to answer the final question. When Dickinson compares the train to an animal, she talks about the animal being hungry and tall with long legs. This makes me think that she's trying to say that the train is really powerful and large. When she describes the train in the poem as curious or playful, this reminds me of a young horse. It seems like she might have been trying to remind the reader that when she is writing the poem, the train is a new technology. Her use of the horse in the extended metaphor may be because the horse used to be the main way people got around. So she's talking about how the train is replacing the horse. These new understandings about what the author was trying to say about the train will help me answer the question, why does the author use extended metaphor to describe the train? Throughout the poem, the author compares the railway train to a horse. 
At first, it seems like the train is being compared to just any animal when the narrator says she likes to see the object lap the miles and lick the valleys up, almost like a cat would do. The phrase, step around a pile of mountains, creates the image of a large animal, maybe a horse or a mountain goat, traveling over difficult terrain. The line, chase itself downhill, is when the image of the horse as the animal the author is using becomes a little more clear. It isn't until the last stanza that it is obvious that the train is being compared to the horse. The poem says the horse neighs and stops at its own stable door. The horse that Dickinson uses in the poem seems curious as it peers into shanties and energetic as it chases itself downhill, which reminds the reader that the train is a new and young technology for the country. The energy, speed, and impressive actions of the train in the poem make it seem more powerful than an actual horse which is what most people used for transportation before the train. We followed these three steps to answer that question. One, we read through the entire poem, underlining words and phrases that indicated the author was comparing the subject of the poem to something else. Then we asked ourselves, what image is created in my mind through these comparisons? We jotted down adjectives or images that represented our visualization. Then we looked over our description and asked ourselves, how does this comparison change the way I see the subject of the poem? In this lesson, you have learned how to interpret an extended metaphor by looking carefully at the word choices meant to paint a picture for the reader.